I, I was thinking that the two extra zeros are uh, w was responsible for the minus one instead of the plus one, but then uh, it converted the one to minus minus one because one minus two. Yes. Right. Yes. I agree. Indeed. Yes. But uh, but but then but then at the end you, you said that we have to replace that formula with something, and then uh, at that point I have not understood. Okay. Yeah. So the string theory, right, doesn't know about this replacement. Okay. String theory gives you a gauge fixed form. For all DP brains, okay. which works most of the time, except for D instantons, that gauge fixing is wrong. Okay. If you do carry out the gauge fixing as for a DP brain, you get this U and V, the ghosts, right? The further up of a ghost that you get by gauge fixing phi equal to zero. Okay. Those are the extra two zero modes, right? Which are reflected in these two states that I wrote down. The I wrote down these two states, 0 and C1, C minus 1 on 0. These are the further up of a ghost that would have gotten by gauge fixing that phi to 0. Right. So this, in the original expression, right, these are the y responsible for this minus 2. But now what we see from this analysis is that that was because the gauge fixing itself was wrong. Right. So you have to remove those integrals over u and v and instead replace it by this ratio over here. So the, the, the formula with the minus 1 is correct? Yes, yes. The formula of the minus 1 was correct. Okay. Exactly. So that minus 1 was actually 1 minus 2. Right. That minus 2 was correct as given in the annular spartation function. Except that the minus 2 came because you had done it on wrong gauge fixing. So once you have rewritten everything in terms of the uh, integrals, right? So let me write this. So the annulus, as given by Walsh's theory, the annulus partition function had integral. Let's call it d psi b one, d psi b zero. This is the one with h b equal to minus one. Okay, this is the uh, bosonic zero mode that we found. D u d v and exponential of half psi b1 square. This is what would have what the annular partition function would have given you. Right? That is the result of minus two. So the minus one came because one zero mode here and two harmonic zero modes. Now what we are saying is that this integral, of course, you do by steepest descent. That gives the i. Psi b0 integral, you change variable to y. Right? That gave k1 times dy. du dv integral, we shouldn't do because this came from the, goal, uh, the ghost integral, right? And we shouldn't gauge fix. So you remove this. Instead, we integrate over the gauge invariant variable phi the, that we had, right? So you integrate over integral d phi. Sorry, there is also, yeah, so once, so this is, this was in the gauge fixed form, right? In the gauge fixed form, phi was set equal to zero, that's why you didn't have the phi, right? But in the gauge invariant form, we have an e to the minus phi square. And then you have to divide by the volume of the gauge flow. Right? And now this gives you root pi, and this gives you 2 pi root k2. Right? So that annulus partition function now has been reinterpreted in this language, okay, where everything is finite, right? except that k1 and k2 we still have to calculate. It's a question from Julian, and also if you have a question for Julian. Um, so you have alluded uh, several times at the symmetry breaking, right? It's the boundary conditions that break the symmetry. Yes. So we should think of this as explicit symmetry breaking. Yes, in the, the full string field theory, kind of, you sum over all the boundary conditions, so you restore the symmetry. Yeah, so this is explicit symmetry breaking from the point of view of the open string that are living on the D instanton. But from the uh, uh, point of view of the closed string theory, it's a spontaneous symmetry breaking. Right. It's like the D, if you have a DP brain, right? Yeah, good. That good. is transverse scalars. Yeah. Okay. Those transverse scalars, you can think of that. Uh, I mean, 
from the DP brain viewpoint, you have put a boundary condition, so you have explicitly broken the symmetry. But in the case that it's spontaneous, then could you think about developing a theory of these non-perturbative effects that just comes from, let's say, an effective theory that follows from that symmetry? For the for the zero mode CS, for the for the psi b, right? In this case, the effective field theory is in fact trivial because it's a flat direction. But on Calabi-Yau, etc., the effective field theory will have a Calabi-Yau target space. And indeed, you are right that you have to think of this as a field theory on the Calabi-Yau target space. And how much of the non-perturbative effects would that determine? That would only determine, in this particular example, that will only determine the 2 pi <laughs> delta E term, right? That will give the K1 and the 2 pi delta E term. Right? These parts are separate, right? This came from because you had done a wrong gauge fixing. The worksheet, the way the worksheet gives the formula is uses the long, wrong gauge fixing. Yeah, some kind of UV input for this, for this effective theory that you still have to explicitly calculate. Exactly, yeah. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Ashok or for Julian? Can I, can I ask one more? So are you going to repeat this discussion also for the fermions in 2B then? Or, or? Well, I may not have the time to do it for 2B, but if you have some specific question, you can ask me right now. No, I'm wondering if it's the, the discussion is very analog or it gets... Uh... Yeah, discussion is very analogous, exactly. So the ghost problem is not there. The, go, the only ghost problem is in the Nemusuar sector, right? And it's the same as what I described. Right? They are the 10 becomes 8 because of this minus, uh, again, the uh, yeah, UV goes that we found. And the zero modes are also similar. Right? The only extra uh, feature is that there are these formulaic zero modes, right? which basically means that when you calculate the uh, amplitude, you have to explicitly insert those formulaic uh, zero mode operators in the uh, amplitude, just like a normal instant on in quantum field theory. So that part is Similar to quantum field theory, the only feature which you normally don't see is for instantons in quantum field theory is this problem with the hosts. Right? The normal instantons don't have this uh, wrong gauge fixing problem. Any other question? Okay, if not, maybe let's thank our speakers again. And now there is an announcement. Yeah, so uh, I know we, everyone's keen to get to lunch, but uh, we wanted to briefly take this opportunity, mention um, uh, the Physics Without Frontiers 